Hi, everybody. It's Joe Chaffee on this uh, Wednesday morning. I took the day off yesterday and went fishing uh, at uh, one of the uh, local parks here on the South Shore. And actually, I was probably right about there somewhere. Um, the Carman's River, it's called. And it uh, empties out into the uh, the Great South Bay, which is this body of water right in here. And it was a lot of fun. Rainbow trout, my uh, fishing buddy, took uh, actually caught three of them. Uh, people around me were catching them, and somehow I wasn't. So that's just the luck of the draw. But no matter, um, we are seeing some changes today, and we're waiting for this weather front to move on through. And ahead of it, temperatures are already climbing up uh, into the 60s and 70s. Uh, into the low 70s, and then the front will move through. There's some showers popping up on the radar. They'll sweep on by. Uh, nothing excessive and certainly nothing in terms of any severe weather. And then cooler air back through Pennsylvania where temperatures are in the 50s and 40s, and that'll start to come in late this afternoon and tonight. But we're going to squeeze out one more day of temperatures uh, well above average up into the 70s. Yesterday was incredible. Temperatures uh, hit the middle 80s over a large portion of New Jersey and the Hudson Valley and in interior Connecticut. In fact, what was astounding to me yesterday was the fact that uh, up in New Hampshire and Vermont uh, and even into southern Maine, temperatures were into the 80s where just nine days ago uh, they had a foot and a half of snow. So one of the things that's resulted from that is all the, all the snow melt. We'll get that a little later. One of the things that resulted from that is all the snow melt uh, uh, is flowing down the Connecticut River. So there's flood watches up for West Central Massachusetts and then down through Central Connecticut. So any of the counties that line up on either side of the um, Connecticut River uh, under a flood watch. So really astounding to, to see, you know, a foot and a half of snow with temperatures in the low 30s. And then um, eight, nine days later, you're in the mid to upper 80s. But that's that's the pattern we're in. So uh, let's take a look at the radar this morning because we do have uh, some showers and you see them here. They're moving right along again. Nothing very impressive. Uh, and as we uh, look out uh, to the west, if I can get this thing to scroll. Hang on a second. Let me just move this up. Gives me a little bit more room to maneuver. Okay, so... There's your uh, the weather in the east. There isn't too much happening in the south. We've got some scattered showers over parts of Alabama, um, a little bit of activity in New Mexico, um, and in in and around maybe just a little bit in, in the parts of southern southwest southeastern Arizona. But there is a lot of action coming into Washington and northwest Oregon with a storm that's off the west coast, and and also we have some showers. Uh, that extend out uh, into uh, Nebraska and the Dakotas. Now, here's our satellite loop, and here's our weather front in the east. There's also a bit of a gale center that's uh, de developing out northeast of the Bahamas. This happened a couple of weeks ago, and it looks like it's happening again. Uh, this keeps on happening as we get into deeper into the month of, uh, as we start to get into late May and June, uh, we're going to have to watch to see whether there's some kind of subtropical development would occur, but it's still way too early for that. And there's our, as I said, there's our eastern front, weather in the southeast of Florida looking good, drier air moving into the Great Lakes and Midwest. Uh, there's the moisture that's moving now up into the Plain States and then in the, on the, in the West Coast. Um, let me uh, update the satellite loop and look at that, there's that swirl right in here, uh, dropping southeastward, eastward, and that's going to turn northeast. It's just kind of doing... Uh, a bit of a drop down here with this upper air energy uh, and clouds and rain coming in to the northwest. Uh, so I think some of this moisture is going to eventually wind to find its way down through um, central California. Uh, as we uh, look at the uh, uh, surface map here on the GFS, so here you can see in the west you got some rain into central California with some heavy mountain snows and, you know, rains and snows up through Oregon, Washington, and Idaho as that system, you know, rotates down and around off the coast and in the meantime in the east that front goes by and you've got this high that builds down from eastern Canada so uh, it's going to chill down a bit uh, temperatures are going to get back down to uh, to average for this time of year which ties basically into the 60s into the low 60s and nighttime lows still down in the uh, 30s and 40s um, now as far as the Easter weekend is concerned we have uh, the next weather system that's going to be running up 
uh, to the Great Lakes. This high is going to drop off the East Coast. So we're setting up for one of these warm front, cold front combinations. And, and ahead of that front, there's the warm front. We're going to have uh, some showers. And uh, then we're going to have to wait for the cold front to move on through. Uh, that's going to come in later in the day on Easter Sunday. So the question is for the Northeast, is whether the warm front moves it moves completely through when we break out into some sunshine. I think we will, and that temperatures Easter Sunday could possibly get up into the upper 70s and low 80s again until this cold front uh, makes its way through. And you can see it here. You know, the warm front looks like it wants to go all the way through, so that's good. And then you get this westerly flow of warm air. So uh, I think much of Easter Sunday uh, for the east is going to look okay. Now, there will be some showers and storms ahead of the uh, front on Sunday over parts of the Ohio Valley down through Illinois, uh, in Indiana and Illinois, down into Missouri and Oklahoma. And out in the west, we've got uh, another storm system that's going to attempt to move in uh, to the western part of the United States. It doesn't look all that impressive. We still seem to be in a setup where we don't have very strong systems. Early next week, another high builds down from the north. So, you know, one of the things I'm noticing uh, I'm going to show you on the upper air in just a second, but I just want to take you through the rest of the GFS. You know, there are going to be opportunities for rain uh, going into next week and beyond as the pattern kind of adjusts a little bit. Um, and there will probably also be some, uh, we'll start to see some bouts of severe weather returning to parts of uh, the Midwest and South uh, as we go into the longer range. But one of the things I'm noticing, and, you know, this could be, you know, we'll see if this is something with regards to how it plays out in the longer term. But, you know, there's been this tendency for the last almost two years for a ridge to build uh, in the eastern part of the United States. And one of the things I'm picking up on is that, yeah, that's still happening. But it seems now that when it happens, unlike going back over the course of the last two years, we had stretches where the ridge would be in the east and just lock in for, you know, many, many, many days at a time. Um, and oftentimes in the, you know, in the summertime, it could even be for weeks. It seems now that as as we worked our way through the winter and as we work our way now through the str uh, spring, that these the ridge still wants to pop up in the east. But um, the uh, time that it stays around seems to be getting shorter and shorter. And this could be a function of finally working out the last of uh, uh, the, the last remaining impacts of the El Nino, uh, the Super El Nino, because that was just a tremendous warming in the atmosphere, and I think it's just taken a lot of time for that to play itself out. And you know, here we have uh, on our um, uh, on the GFS uh, as we uh, look ahead. You know, we're starting out with this ridge breaking down, and then you know, you get a bit of a trough here. So this is what why we're cooling off uh, just a bit. A uh, bit of a flow coming out of Canada, nothing exceptional, and you still have, you know, these weather systems. You know, that's the one constant in all of this is the fact that the Pacific jet has been so um, unrelenting with weather system after weather system coming in. Now, here's how that ridge builds. See how it builds right back for Easter weekend, and then it's gone. So it really only lasts for about a day, and then we're going to uh, see a cooler flow. You know, then later next week it pops up for a day, but then another bit of trough right away swings into it. See that that's the difference here uh, from what, what I've seen the, as the pattern has, in, and we're talking here now like super long term, you know, we go back to last year, these weather systems, when they um, tried to come into the east, the ridge was so strong that they would weaken and fall apart. That's not happening anymore. They seem to be holding together rather well. So the ridge tries to pop up and the troughs come, about, come along, these short wave troughs come along and break the ridge down. So um, I think that is... Um, uh, a good indicator. I think that is a good indicator of the fact that um, we're going to continue to see these opportunities for rain. That the longer term dry pattern in the east is coming to an it, it is coming to an end, um, and the winter time kind of showed that pretty well. Um, here you go as we go into the longer range. You know, there's a tendency for troughing here and a little blocking developing up in in uh, in up up in the Atlantic, up in Greenland. So we're going to have to watch this. And now we're almost, you know, to the very end of the month. I mean, this certainly would implies uh, some colder than average temperatures, or let's say call it cooler than average temperatures, 
getting a ridge building in the west. Uh, you got these weather systems moving across the southern stream of, of the Pacific jet kind of breaks down. We'll see if this pattern winds up uh, evolving this way, but um, I'm pretty hopeful uh, with regards to the rainfall uh, situation in the east and, and the drought situation. It continues to ease fairly rapidly, and I think it will continue to ease as we move through uh, the remaining remaining part of the spring. All right, so listen, everybody have a great day. Uh, check out latest website posts at meteorologistjoechoppy.com. Angry Ben has NYC covered on nycweathernow.com. And you can uh, check my Facebook page. And by the way, I have uh, some library talks that I'm going to be giving uh, over the next couple of months on Long Island. Uh, and I have those posted on my Facebook page, Meteorologist Joe Choppy. So if you're on Long Island, I have one that I'll be doing at the Patchog Medford Library at the end of May, May 31st, uh, which is a Wednesday. And then on Saturday, June 3rd, I will be in the next town over at the Sayville Library. Uh, this is a South Shore, Suffolk County. And beyond that, uh, at uh, the first weekend in August, uh, August 5th, I will be, and that's a Saturday, uh, I will be at the Lindenhurst Library, and on Monday, August 7th, I will be at the Connecticut Library. All of these, by the way, uh, in Suffolk County on Long Island. So um, you can check out more information from that if you go to my Facebook page, Meteorologist Joe Choppy, and I spell my last name, C-I-O-F-F-I. -F -F -I. YouTube subscriber, if you're new. If you're if you come back every day, thanks for being here. If you're new to the videos, uh, uh, you're here. You've lasted this long. Thank you, and click on my little subscribe button, the red button on my channel page, so that um, you can become a regular subscriber, which is absolutely free. You'll get notifications when new videos come up, which is usually once a day, except when I go take the day off to go fishing, which I may do from time to time over the coming months. All right, everybody, have a great uh, Wednesday, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.